Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here with you all and um, just be together in community. And Roselli talked about coffee and the importance of being caffeinated. So, um, and apparently we have an angel out there who's going to keep us all caffeinated. And it made me think about one of my first work experiences in my life. In fact, uh, it was the first time that I had ever received a real paycheck. I was 15 years old and I got a job at the Ugly Mug. Now, the Ugly Mug was a brand new artisanal coffee community space that had opened in my hometown of Santa Cruz, California, a very sleepy surf town uh, about an hour and a half south of San Francisco. And this uh, very eccentric coffee maker came into town with a really expensive manual Italian beautiful espresso machine and a bunch of ugly mugs. And his vision was to bring people together over the craft of coffee and over conversation, drinking out of his mug collection. So I was lucky enough to be one of the first employees and as the lowly 15 year old employee making 575 an hour, uh, my job was to come in on Saturday morning and open the coffee shop at 5.55 a.m. Over the course of the first few weeks of my job, the same woman would be standing outside waiting for her coffee every single Saturday morning. No matter what I did, and believe me, if you could imagine, I had gone through extensive training on how to sling a great latte, but no matter what I did, this woman was so upset with the quality of my latte and she would berate me over how bad my latte was. And it made me feel really scared and frustrated about my job security. And it also made me confused because she just didn't quite seem like she could ever be made happy. And I was talking to my mom about it because it really was something that happened like clockwork every Saturday morning. And my mom said, this one nugget of wisdom, which was maybe she's lonely and it's not the coffee that's making her upset, it's the loneliness. So the next morning I went in and I brought, I stole my parents' Santa Cruz Sentinel off their front porch and I brought it in and I laid it out on the counter. And when she walked in, I started making her coffee and I started pointing out some of the things that I saw on the, and you can imagine Santa Cruz local newspaper, there's not a lot going on, but I started pointing out a couple things and asking her opinion. And she started telling me her opinion. And we started to talk and we started to connect. And wouldn't you imagine that when I turned 18 and went off to college, she was there to give me a big hug and to wish me well on my journey ahead. So that woman and that point of connection has stayed with me ever since I was a kid. And I think that's why we're all here today, is that we are the change makers. We are the people that bring others together to provide that point of connection. And I, don't, I know I'm preaching to the choir to say that that connection is needed more now than ever before. We didn't know what we had until it was gone. And now we're choosing to live our lives differently and to be in community differently. And you're the magic makers. You're the ones that are creating that connection that are allowing people to create indelible memories together. And that I think is probably the most noble profession in the world. So today I wanna talk to you about the theme of reconvene which is talking about this, this concept of connection, but we're also going to the future. And I wanna talk about three distinct themes that we see right ahead. The first is the immersive experience. When you think about what it was like, you know, back in the day going to an event, it was really transactional. You kind of bought your ticket somewhere offline you went to the event, you experienced the event, maybe it was great, maybe it was bad, and you went on your merry way. But I wanna tell you a story of someone in this room who I think 
exemplifies where we're going with experiences and how different they are than back in even 2005 when we started the company. And that's my dear friend, Corey. Corey, I am so far off this thing that I may get some things wrong, so bear with me. And you fact check me along the way. All right. Um, so Corey moved to New York in 2011. And he wanted to explore the city like anybody would. There's so much rich history, well beyond the things that you see on billboards or the things that you can even see above ground. Corey wanted to go underground. He wanted to see the things that you couldn't experience on any given main you know, stream tour or a, a God knows a hop on, hop off bus. He really wanted to understand the rich history behind this incredible city, arguably the best in the world. And so Corey was able to find these places through his imagination, but he had a hard time getting his friends to want to go with him, to go under, literally under subways where I think the rats are the size of raccoons and behind closed walls and doors that, you know, nobody I think had opened in, in maybe a century. And because he had this problem that he wanted to find connection and he wanted to understand the city, he decided that he would go on a new adventure every week. And he was able to um, bring together people on a Facebook group and basically be able to get other people, maybe even beyond his, his initial friend group, to want to come with him on these adventures. And what started as this, you know, fellow call for fellow adventurers online, on social media, which was a really big part of the story, has turned into a full-fledged business of 20 events a week called the New York City Adventure Club. So the popularity of, of this group becoming a sustainable and high growth company that Corey is now the CEO of, and also he got married in April. Uh, congrats. <laughs> the club's events are successful because the attendees help shape the experience. So no one experience in the New York Adventure Club series of events is actually the same. Because you never know what can happen when you discover secret rooms underground or behind doors that haven't been opened in a long time. And you never know how different connections are going to be made in this kind of an experience when you're on an adventure together. So more and more, consumers are looking for experiences where they can help shape the outcome and where they can be game in making this experience come to life. We've seen all kinds of immersive experiences pop up on Eventbrite. Another one I want to mention is Plant Sip Vibe, which is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it brings together houseplant enthusiasts to talk about the hottest houseplants of the moment while sipping wine and eating charcuterie, which sounds, aside from like the fact that I can't keep a plant alive, I think the wine and the charcuterie sounds amazing and I'd love to, to be in community with plants. So all of these events really share um, one common theme, which is that we are moving towards a, a future where the consumer has the power, where they have independence, where they have choice, and they want to be a part of a community and they want to have autonomy. And so gone are the days where you program an event where everything goes from A to Z exactly the way you imagined. I think the takeaway for us is that the future is about including your guests in that experience. And you never know where that's gonna lead. The second thing that we see up ahead is I'm sure not a surprise to any of you, uh, but being based in Silicon Valley, we see uh, this explosion of AI emerge. Now AI has been around for decades, but the way that we're now using generative AI to solve problems or to even create connections is breathtaking. The speed is what's breathtaking. The possibilities are endless. The results are in our hands. And I think as event creators, 
and gatherers, we think maybe, you know, AI might be disruptive to our businesses. And what does this mean for people actually gathering? Are we all going to just be talking to our AI girlfriends and boyfriends like that movie, Her? Um, Yes, <laughs> there are people who will be doing that and who are doing that right now. I just want to like uh, ex just say absolutely. Um, but what we see at Eventbrite in almost two decades of work of bridging technology to in real life connection is that AI is an important tool for us to help you do your jobs better and also to help consumers find the right event at the right time for whatever they're in the mood for. I want to tell a little bit of a story about Duck Club. Um, they are an incredible group out of Boise, um, and they always had, uh, they always knew that Boise had musical talent, but was really undervalued as a music destination. So three friends, Eric Gilbert, Lori Chandro and Megan Stoll set out to create one. So they founded the Tree Fort Music Festival in 2012. And their idea was very strategic. Tree Fort was going to be a stop on the way home from people going to South by Southwest. So heading back to Portland and Seattle, where some of our beloved Brightlings live, uh, they wanted to create that, that second stop for people and extend the experience, which I think, would think was quite practical and genius. And today, it's a destination all its own. Over 15,000 people spread across five days of festivities, which is incredible, big, big props to them. Um, and in addition to their flagship Tree Fort Festival, Doug Club also hosts regular concerts, often with four or five days of show. So between all the things that they need to do to scout bands, to book acts, to deal with theaters, and even build their own venue, there isn't a lot of time for them to spend on their event marketing. And that's where Eventbrite came in. So we recently built some new AI capability that allows Duck Club to actually auto, I hate this word and I'm going to use it, automagically create their event marketing and send it out into the universe. <laughs> I, I have no other word to describe it. Uh, they also have used things like our Spotify interest audience wizard tool to target consumers. And I guess what I'm saying is that Eventbrite's on the forefront of this movement because we are tech enabled. Roselli said it's not all about technology, but that underpins everything that we do for the purpose to connect people to your events. And what I have to say about that is Eventbrite's been through a lot, as you have in the last few years. We made a commitment to ourselves in 2020 that we would do in the next three years what we would have done if we could do it all over again. And I'm really proud of where we are today. The ability to spin up tools being uh, supported by AI to allow you to do, something, to do something as quickly as create an event in five seconds, send out email marketing, use our paid social advertising, be able to reach millions of consumers with Eventbrite's technology capability is something that I think is just the beginning because I've seen the roadmap, and Ted will talk more about that. And also, it's a testament to the fact that we are in the strongest position we've ever been in as a company, and we're investing in technology and in you. So you should continue to expect us to roll out interesting features. Yes, it feels like everybody's got to have an AI something, and it's all kind of a you know arms race to razzle-dazzle. We're actually focused on solving the problems that you tell us you have. Our core principle is to make what you do better, faster, and more effective so that you can spend more time on creating the experience and less time on doing the admin work. Because Lord knows we, have, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> All right, third trend. We see that there is a need for multi-channel, multi-platform storytelling. I think I'm kind of stating the obvious. You know, back when we started the company, people would find events by tearing off a, a flyer. And, you know, 
bringing it to the event, paying by cash. It was very analog, as you can imagine. I know I'm dating myself. When I think about how we as humans interpret and receive stories today, I think there's just such a vast opportunity for creators like yourselves. Because every event is a multi-hyphenate. Every event is a multi-chaptered story. Not one person in this room just decided to do a thing and then it was, a, it was like a linear straight path. It's gone through so many different twists and turns and chapters and iterations and you've grown. And I think that story and that essence needs to be told on more platforms to more consumers. And we're focused on helping you do that more directly through Eventbrite. So this is talking a little bit more about the future than what you see on the platform today, but I can tell you that the direction we're headed in is giving you those tools to tell your story at the right time to the right person so that they're compelled to come join your community. Because consumers aren't just going to Google to find things to do. And they're not just you know, reading the local newspaper. They're really finding out about where they should be through all the different signals that they get through social media. And we want to help you be there at the exact right time. We think we could do a lot better job. So when we think about um, storytelling, one example comes to mind. I want to share this short story, and then I'm going to hustle off stage, which is Ping Ho from Mero Restaurant. Growing up in, in Singapore, Ping knew exactly where her food came from. Her grandmother would bring her to the local market where they knew the butcher, they knew the fishmonger, and they trusted them and their expertise to recommend the choicest products and the best cuts. Ping has brought that ethos to Detroit, of all places, with the help of butcher Nick Ponte. And Mero, her restaurant and butcher shop, uses the common language of food to start a conversation about what we eat and who puts it on our table. Mero hosts live workshops where people can saddle up to the bar and get to know tomorrow's steak special, tomorrow's steak special, up close and personal. I think about them saddling up to the bar and seeing a cow, but I, I don't think that's it. I think they talk a little bit more about past the cow. Uh, <laughs> so, I, so I think that, you know, when Ping had this, had this realization that it's not just about the service of food, but it's about where the food came from and the rich stories behind the artisans and the butchers and the fishmongers who bring the food to the table, this created a whole new experience for Mero. It went beyond a restaurant to a community. And her story is central to everything that she does because customers show up, they wanna be a part of it. They wanna immerse themselves in that story. So I think the thing that I want you to know is that your story matters. You know, oftentimes we get to where we are, maybe we have some success, but we want to sort of forget about the failures that happened along the way. And that string of failures is exactly what led us to where we are today. You have an incredible story that every single one of your guests should understand, and it's worth telling. So we want to help you unlock that, and we want to help you use your voice and your story to attract people to your events. And so that comes back to really why we started Eventbrite, which is community. In the US, half of the surveyed adults say that they're lonely. We are at an absolute crisis point. And that's in part why we decided to launch the Social Connection Project. The idea was that Eventbrite already knows where people are going and we know which events light up communities. So can we invest in research that will help each of you with practical tips on how to be an agent of change on how to create the antidote to social isolation. This is a platform that not only can help you build your business, 
but also help you create the change that we want to see in the world. And I don't know how often you sit back and pat your own back, but I'm going to do it for you. If the world didn't have you, we would be lost. There would be no in real life connection. There would be no spark of creativity. There would be no indelible memory making. So the world needs you more than ever, and Eventbrite wants to be behind you, supporting you along the way. And I'm just honored to be your partner in this mission, and I'm honored that you trust us 